Hello and welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we will focus on Fidelity Pointwise and will highlight the new advanced feature from the T-Rex panel called Acceleration. The Anisotropic Tetrahedral Extrusion, or T-Rex, is an advancing layer algorithm for automatically generating layers of anisotropic tets that are suitable for resolving high gradient fluid regions such as those we see in the boundary layers. Now, the T-Rex algorithm starts with a watertight front consisting of triangles and quads and marches one layer at a time, performing several calculations and quality checks for each layer. Ultimately, the advancing layer scheme stops when either the cells have reached isotropy or if the cell quality criteria can no longer be maintained. In the end, the regions between the final fronts and the outer boundaries are filled with isotropic tets or a combination of voxels and tets. Now, the new feature that I want to talk to you about in this video aims at accelerating the performance of the T-Rex algorithm by forcing the solver to advance multiple layers at a time when possible. This way, the algorithm will take a larger step in each pass based on the accumulative height of multiple layers, which means it will skip a lot of computations that will be necessary for each of those layers. Finally, the solver will go back and perform cell subdivisions based on the number of layers that were skipped. Now, the way this works is that you'll basically have a trade-off between quality and performance. That is why the acceleration feature provides us with a slider allowing us to move across this spectrum. On the left, we have the layer subdivision set to one, which means that the T-Rex will march one layer at a time like it normally does. And so it will perform all the computations and quality checks for every single layer, which means there would be no accelerations. Now, this is the quality mode, which is actually the default setting. Now, on the other end of the slider, we have the layer subdivision set to five, which means that the T-Rex will try to advance five layers at a time before actually going back and performing the cell subdivisions. Now, this can greatly speed up the T-Rex algorithm, which is why we call this the performance setting. Okay, so let's see how it all works. Here, we're looking at a simple 3D block where we're growing T-Rex cells off of the bottom wall with the side walls set to the match boundary. Let's select this block and choose Grid T-Rex from the menu. I've already defined the T-Rex boundary conditions and set the max and full layers to 150 layers. If I check the advanced option, we see all the advanced settings for T-Rex, but we're going to focus on this new sub-panel called Acceleration, which we just talked about. Right now, we have the Use Default option checked, which puts the slider on the Quality setting with the layer subdivision set to 1. Let's now go back to the Solve tab and initialize this block. Okay, the block is initialized, and if I scroll up in the Messages window, you'll see that we have the T-Rex algorithm advancing one layer at a time and until we reach isotropy or meet other stopping conditions, and this is basically the normal or standard mode of operation for T-Rex. Now let's go back to the T-Rex tab, and this time set the layer subdivisions to five, which is the performance setting. Let me also clear the messages window first and now go back to the solve tab and hit initialize again. Once again, we see T-Rex doing its job beautifully, but if we look closely at the output in the messages window, we'll see that T-Rex starts by marching five layers at a time for the first 40 layers. And then as we get closer and closer to reaching isotropy, the algorithm intelligently reduces the number of layer subdivisions and eventually it marches one layer at a time for the last few layers before stopping the anisotropic extrusion. Now here we notice a considerable speed up, but remember that this was a very simple test case and performance gains would actually be much more significant for more complex examples. So try this feature out in your applications and let us know how it's working out for you. Okay, so before we wrap up, let me point out a few important notes here. First, you need to remember that, as we discussed before, the, the acceleration is actually made possible by skipping some of the intermediate calculations and quality checks. So if we really push the acceleration toward performance, we might see some cell quality degradation. For example, in the case of the wing pylon store, with the original settings, 
None of the cells actually have a max included angle greater than 175 degree. But if we set the acceleration to maximum performance, we actually get 18 cells with a max included angle greater than 175 degree. But the cell quality degradation is actually found to be very minimal for layer subdivisions set to three or less. So keep that in mind. Also, with full layer set to zero, T-Rex will perform a single layer subdivision for the first two layers, regardless of the choice of acceleration. However, with full layer set to a value greater than zero, like we saw for the simple block example, T-Rex will try to advance multiple layers at a time, starting from the first layer. It is also important to note that the acceleration feature works with both constant growth rates as well as custom growth profiles, which is great because you can utilize these custom profiles while taking advantage of the speed ups that can be achieved using the acceleration feature. Also, as we saw earlier, the actual number of subdivisions would be determined automatically by the solver depending on various factors. Therefore, if we choose, for example, layer subdivisions of five, it doesn't mean that the fidelity point-wise will continue to jump five layers at a time. And in fact, that number will be automatically reduced down to one as the front approaches isotropy. Finally, and as a more advanced option, our glyph scripting language actually lets you use layer subdivisions as large as 10 as opposed to a maximum of five that is permitted via the graphical user interface. Again, this is something that you can play with for, for your specific application so to see how much performance gain you can achieve with various numbers of layer subdivisions. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.